Ted, what do you say, boy? How are you doing? Oh, good, good to see you. Sure good to see you, too. Meet Captain Ted Lawson and Captain Dean Davenport of the Army Air Corps. You may have heard something about a little flight they made last year. They were pilot and co-pilot in one of those B-25s which took off from the deck of the Hornet and delivered a basket of eggs to Tojo. Sure great to see you again, Ted. Good yeah, to see you. good to see you too, Dean. Say, did you ever get married when you came back here to the States? No, not me, Dad. <laughs> I thought you were in that hospital in China. You were always saying when you first got back to the States, you were going to get married first. No, I was in China, Ted. Things are a little different here. You're not fooling. They really are. I didn't think we'd ever make it. Say, so, remember that crash we had out there on the beach, then? That's no fooling. Oh, that was a little rough. Never heard so much noise in my life. No, I really was Hasn't been so terribly long ago, though, really just a little over a year. 79 men and 16 planes on that ship, waiting for the moment to take off for Tokyo. Funny we weren't more nervous. It was almost as if we were going on a regulation training flight. <laughs> Remember the day Doolittle tied that Jap medal on a bomb? The guy who sent it in said we should return it with interest. And we did. It was on our plane, wasn't it? I think so. Maybe it was a bomb that blew that uh, steel smeller to smithereens. Ted, I still don't understand why our motors conked out on us after we left Tokyo. We checked and rechecked those planes every day. Well, those B-25s weren't made for the ocean, Dean. The salt in the air must have gotten our carburetor jet someplace along the line. Did you ever exercise with those Navy guys, Ted? You're darn right. And every time I ran around that flight deck, it seemed like it'd be too short for a pigeon to take off from. But Doolittle said it could be done, and he was right. Yeah, the morning of the takeoff, he looked like a man without a worry in the world. A great guy. I'll never forget that morning. April the 18th, 9.50 a.m., Saturday. We were still 400 miles away from where we were supposed to take off because that Jap patrol boat we ran into. The only rations we had time to put in the plane were a dozen candy bars and cigarettes. Remember what you said to me, Dean, as we sat in the plane? It looks like we got ourselves into a hell of a mess. And you said this is a hell of a time to think of a thing like that. Doolittle's plane went first. It all had been planned out on paper, but this was the first real test. The first time anyone tried to boost a land plane that size off the deck of a carrier. The extra load of gasoline and bombs didn't help either. I was pushing that plane in the air for all I was worth. Who was it? I sure had a bad case of the jitters when our turn came. Remember, I forgot to put down those flaps. Hell, it was my fault as much as yours. I should have checked. We were all jittery. That flight deck was short. The ocean was like a roller coaster. made it, that's what counts. That's one trip I'll never forget, Ted. Nobody will forget it, Captain. And we won't forget the pilots on the raid who were captured by the Japs. And we aren't forgetting how some of them, we don't know how many, were murdered in cold blood. General Arnold, Chief of the Army Air Force, has given the answer for all of us. My message is to all personnel of the Army Air Forces. In violation of every rule of military procedure and every concept of human decency, the Japanese have executed several of your brave comrades who took part in the first Tokyo raid. Those men died as heroes. We must not rest. We must redouble our efforts until the inhuman warlords who committed this crime have been utterly destroyed.